I've started using Shader Graph for not so long ago, and I've been able to learn more than just the basics of it. And since a lot of people in this community are asking for more beginner-friendly tutorials, today I thought we're gonna cover the absolute basics of Shader Graph, such as how you get started, what you need to know, and also explain the workflow a little bit. If you guys want to learn more about Shader Graph, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Also, let us know in the comments section, what kind of effect do you want to create using Shader Graph? Is it perhaps some like water shader or perhaps some cartoon effect? I'm personally interested in water shader and I just want to know what you guys are interested in so I can make tutorials out of that content. Now, without further ado, let's create some shaders. Hey guys, Sam here. So as you already might know, Shader Graph was released with Unity 2018.1 and so I thought we should have a beginner's guide to Shader Graph on the channel. Before getting into it, I just want to give a huge shout out to Rich's Stance, Cupola, Trombear MCP, and all of our other Patreons. You guys are awesome. But now, let's get started. So first thing we have to strike off of our list is installing a later version of Unity. That means either Unity 2018.1 or later. I would suggest you to go with 2018.2, which is also the version that I'm using, since that also adds support for Shader Graph in the high definition rendering pipeline. So right now we are in a project that I created and obviously, like I said before, I am already using the latest version of Unity. The first thing we wanna do in here is to enter the package manager via the window button and then go to package manager and just make sure that the latest version of lightweight render pipeline is installed. We are doing this because we want to make sure that we have got the latest version of Shader Graph running and Shader Graph is a part of the lightweight render pipeline and if you're running the high definition render pipeline then it's a part of that package. So you basically don't really have a package for Shader Graph, you just have to update the rendering pipeline you're using right now. In order to demonstrate the effect we will create in this video, I have got this 3D character that I downloaded through the asset store for free, which you will also, by the way, find a link to in the description. And now we are going to create our first shader. So what we're gonna do is go anywhere in our assets folder and then right click and pick create. Then go into shader and click on either of these three different graphs. For this video, we are going to pick the most commonly used one, the PBR graph. And now we get to rename our asset file and I will just call it Saiku shader and then add this shader to a material. For this video, I'm going to create a new material called Saiku material so that we can keep a track of them and then add the shader to this material. We are now going to add Saiku material to this character and there we go. So we have a gray character, which doesn't really look that beautiful, but still, I mean, we did something, right? And now we can open up the shader by clicking on it twice or simply by clicking open shader editor in the inspector. And here we go. So this is the shader graph window or the editor is also called and it works just like any other window in Unity. That basically means we can add it as a tab beside any other window like the game window, resize it and move it around, have it floating, whatever you want to do with it, you're pretty much free to do so. I usually have it as a tab beside my scene window in my current layout and then just use shift and space in order to make it full screen. It's a shortcut if you didn't know that. So as you can see in the editor, we start off with one node by default and it is called the master node. The master node is what you connect all your other nodes into when you create shaders, which we are obviously going to take a look at in this video. A couple other things we can do in the master node is control the base color of the surface of our object by changing the albedo color. And we can also control the color and intensity of light that is emitted by this object by changing the emission color. In order to add a new node, we can either right click somewhere in the editor and then pick create node or simply press space on our keyboard, which is a shortcut almost everyone uses. When you create a new node, you get a set of options. Some of them lead to even more options. So you can just see by browsing here how deep this actually goes. Now let us demonstrate the workflow by simply creating a color node. So let's go ahead and press space and type in color in the search field. We just have to press enter and the node will be added into the editor. And now let's move this node a little to the left by dragging it with our mouse. We are also allowed to move ourselves in the editor by holding down the middle mouse button. We can also zoom in and out by scrolling. 
And one little trick that I figured on my own is that you can also move as much as you want to, move the nodes, zoom in and out and all that fun stuff, then press A on your keyboard and that will center the camera and zoom so you can see all of your nodes. So now that we have got our master node and the color node, we are ready to connect them together. I want to control the base color of this character by using the color node instead of the albedo color field in the master node. So let's drag the output in our color node all the way to the albedo input of our master node. And we can now see that the default color box of the albedo field has now been replaced with the line that is heading to our color node. That basically means we now control the albedo color through this color node. And now it's time for us to pick a new color for the base of our character. I feel like we're gonna go with, mm, let's say red. All right, let's say red for this video. And you will now quickly see that we can preview this in real time in the shader editor. And this whole display for the live preview can also be resized and also moved around freely so you can place it wherever you want to and it's just going to stick there. You can also hide and display the previews of each node by clicking the arrows on them. Now, as a matter of fact, I wanna see the preview showing our actual character instead of just seeing the sphere. So let's right click on it, pick custom mesh, and then select the mesh of our character. Now, let us say that we wish to change the base color of our mesh via the inspector window in Unity, instead of having to open up the shader editor every time we wanna change up the color. And the good news is the fact that you can do that very easily. So, all we have to do is right click on the node we wanna display in the inspector, in this case, the color node we have here, and then just convert it to property, and that is pretty much it. So, let's also go ahead and save our asset. And we can now see this property in our properties list top left in the editor in which we can also rename it to like character color. I think I'll just rename it here and unfold to see more settings like the color field. However, as a matter of fact, you don't really have to play around with the color in this field, in the properties field, because this is only going to change the preview color and not the one that is in the inspector, which basically means this is not going to take an effect in your game, it's just going to happen in the shader editor. And we can also see that the color node no longer shows the color field where we can change the color. That is because it's now a property and is shown in the Unity inspector instead. So we basically just have to go to Unity, select the material we connected our shader to, and now in the inspector, you can see that we have got the color field, which also matches with the name we picked for it in the properties field, which is a neat little trick that they added. And now that we changed the color in this field to be red, as we have already done in the editor, we can see that the character turns red, but it doesn't really have any textures, so it's just red, right? And does not have any clothes or anything like that. So let's go ahead and change that. We're gonna go back to the shader editor and click on the plus sign in the properties field. We will pick texture 2D from the list that unfolds and rename this to body texture. And now we just basically have to drag and drop this into our editor from the properties field. However, there's only room for one input for the master node in terms of the albedo color and the color node is already taking that place, right? So we almost have to merge the color node and the property that we just created for the texture before being able to proceed. And we can actually easily solve that by creating a new node that is called multiply. This allows us to connect two nodes to it in order to multiply them. And in this case, like with basic words, I would say the multiply node works almost like an adapter. It takes two nodes and turns them into one single output, which is perfect because that's exactly what we need. So now we're gonna want to multiply the red color with our character's texture. But the thing is, if we try doing that right now, the multiply input won't accept our texture output. That is because the output of our texture property is a texture 2D type, while the albedo input of our master node is a single channel pass. So what we basically have to do is we have to convert our texture into a single channel pass. And by the way, if you wonder how I see this, if we look at the parentheses in the output of our texture node, we can see a T2, which states that it's a texture 2D type. However, we can easily solve this by dragging our texture output 
Let go the mouse button on a empty side of the editor to pop up the create node menu and pick the sample texture to the node. And that will automatically connect the output of our texture into the input of the texture sample node. So let's drag the outputs of those two into the input of our multiply node and then drag the output of our multiply node into the albedo of our master node. Cool, that's pretty much it. And now we can see a live preview of how our character will look. However, the texture of our character's body is still not visible because we haven't added that yet. We just basically created a property but never assigned any textures to it. And now you might be looking for like a texture field in the editor, but and if you're doing actually good because that means you're trying to learn something new, but basically we cannot assign a texture for this property in the editor, we need to do it through the inspector window. And a little homework for you guys, that's because properties cannot be assigned any values, textures, vectors, or whatever it might be through the shader editor. You have to do that through the inspector window because that's a property, which basically means like it's a variable that is visible in the inspector. So let's go ahead and save this shader asset and then go back to Unity, pick the character, browse down a little bit in the list so we can see the material field in the inspector, and let's assign the body texture of our character in this field. There we go. Now we have a red texture color. And we are also able to control the color of our character's body now, as well as the texture through the inspector window. And that is pretty much a coverage of how you use the shader graph in Unity. Obviously, this was just an easy and beginner-friendly example and tutorial on how you get started, but from now on, we are going to create some effects and I will make tutorials on them. So with that being said, let us know in the comments what sort of effects you would like me to create and teach you, because I want to make sure I create the content you guys enjoy the most. And yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed watching, and if you did, make sure to give this video a like down below and hit the subscribe button so you stay up to tune for new content. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the comment section and in our discord server which is by the way linked in the description enjoy your night guys peace out